Hello, this is Dr. Ashley Loran. I think Amber Rose Levenchuk did an awesome job with her speech at the Republican National Convention. I am voting for Biden. I believe in facts. We did spend a lot less money during the Trump presidency. Now, that was the first two years of the Trump presidency. Then COVID happened. It was the beginning of COVID, so prices were starting to rise. Trump did not have to deal with the highest prices, how can I say it, of the pandemic, because by that time, his presidency was over. These are natural ebbs and flows of catastrophic events. It just so happened that Trump was president during the first two years of COVID, but those were the last two years of his presidency. So yes, overall, overall, we paid less um, for groceries and for gas and other consumer goods as Americans. Um, some of that is due to his hard work and his administration's hard work. Some of that is due to happenstance. Uh, Biden had to deal with a pandemic as soon as he got into office, trying to remove us from the 20-year disaster that is Afghanistan. Prices were naturally going to be high, whether Republican or Democrat had to deal with what Biden had to deal with. And those are also facts. Amber Rose is a beautiful face. I want people, particularly black people, just stop to saying to stop saying, why did they have Amber Rose up there um, uh, representing black women in front of those white people? She's not black. Black America, black America. Amber Rose, even though Amber Rose herself says she's not black, Amber Rose is well aware that to, you know, the members of the Republican National Committee, although she's biracial or triracial, she represents an African woman that can influence the Black American women. That's why they have her speaking up there. The Republicans' weakest uh, constituency is the Black American woman. We are the, the the black America population spends the most money on what entertainment. She is an African woman, and she literally is. Her family is from Cape Verde. She's an African woman, triracial African woman, but an African woman. That's an entertainment. Of course, they will put her on the stage to you know get black American women's attention and it's getting your attention whether positively or negatively and I believe that Amber Rose wanted to participate in getting your attention I don't think she minds that um, because she wants us as black American women to consider Trump now Amber Rose is also correct about, she's also correct about, you know, the average MAGA person. They really are nice people. I have lived in the South the majority of my life. Yes, I have lived on the West Coast for a few years and in the center of the country for like a year. But I've lived in the South for the most of my life and mostly around Republicans, really. Uh, 
and you know, some Democrats as well. And people are just people. They're trying to set up a nest egg for their children. They're, you know, going to church, school. They want the best for their people as well. And, you know, I grew up with the Southern Baptist Convention, you know, around the Southern Baptist Convention uh, for high school. You know, I was involved um, in one of the first Baptist churches, you know, high school, in their high school program, you know, every Saturday for like three months at the beginning of three school years, three out of the four of my high school school years at church, choir practice, going out and witnessing with hundreds of high schoolers. This was a Southern Baptist Convention mega church. The Southern Baptist Convention is a majority white denomination. The National Baptist Convention is a majority uh, black denomination. You also have Korean Baptist Church, the Independent Baptist. Um, I've met an Independent Baptist person before, but... um. You have other denominations of Baptists as well, but those are the two most well-known in this country. National Baptist Convention, the black brand, and a Southern Baptist Convention, the white brand. Um, and I spent my high school years with the Southern Baptist Convention and the white brand. And a lot of them are now MAGA supporters. And it, it is the sweetest, the sweetest people ever. They just want to know that you understand that, hey, over here, we work hard. We don't uh, sleep around with different people for the sake of sleeping around. Do you have a husband you're trying to get? Do you have a wife you're trying to get? How long have y'all been dating? What's the situation like? Like they're really into your business. And they because they want to see you happy. Um, and they actually want you t to see you, you know, as a young person, successful and, you know, not out on the street, not out here looking crazy, things in that nature. Uh, they just ask that you not talk about abortion and twerking and all of this and all of that, you know, in polite settings. You know, they're, just, <laughs> they're real people with real funny bones and, you know, just, just like me and you. Just like everything has its order, place, and time. And please, let's respect that. Let's not dance on, you know, a lot of black women sometimes. Sometimes some of us can be a little ratchet in public. Um, you know, you're dancing on tables in public and dancing on cars in public and twerking in public randomly in the middle of a store aisle. Like, no, you know, let's cut all of that out, you know, not Miss Southern Baptist Convention, you know, and, and believe me they emphasize being sex sexy and sexual do something to your hair i gave you a little i bought you a little cute little purse for graduation you know put some little eye makeup on you know they're regular people believe me uh, laundry parties and everything believe me but just you know everything done in decency and in order right that's their motto you know have some class about you. That's all it is. Um, so she's right. The MAGA people are really, they're really nice and really friendly. And you know, a lot, a lot of black people will say, oh, why is she dealing with the white people? Didn't they come over here and steal the land? And they were invited over here from Europe to take the land from Native Americans and all of this and all of that. Think about it. The Bible literally says, he who does not provide for his children is worse than an infidel. People take that verse literally. That is why you have immigrants that are saying, I can't feed my children in this Latin American country. There are no jobs. You know, oh. Um, uh, you know, it's dangerous. There are, ga there are gangs all around here. But America is, you know, I heard that America is giving immigrants gas cards and things just to get on their feet until they get on their feet. I am going to 
take the Darien Gap, the dangerous Darien Gap in Panama, I believe, and I'm going to risk my life so I can give my children a better future. They take that verse so seriously, where you have some black American men in this country, goodness, they could go apply for a Popeye's chicken application. And they're not doing that. They're sitting on the couch and playing video games, knowing that your child's mother is currently pregnant. And you're not, you know, you're just expecting to live with her and play video games. And because she allows you, you think that's okay. Well, could in your household use some more money to, to buy diapers in the future? And it's like, you know, when you have some people literally crossing the Darien Gap to make sure that they can provide for their family, right? Um... You have, and, and that's what I don't like about Donald Trump um, when he speaks about the immigrants. They're bringing guns, gun, they're bringing guns, they're bringing crime. Say some of them are bringing guns. Some of them are bringing crime. As part of being a member of that First Baptist Church, as a teenager in 2003, we went to on a mission trip to Mexico. We visited the church in Mexico to see, you know, some of the needs of the church. Uh, we didn't have time to attend a church service, but I think we just like prayed with the pastor and some of the parishioners there. Latin America is very Catholic, right? You have people leaving their home countries, hoping that they can provide for their family in America. And you're saying, you know, just even they're bringing guns, they're bringing crimes, they're rapists. Are you saying that the people who are Catholic and pray to God every day that something comes through in America are bringing guns, are bringing crime, are rapists? Watch how you're talking about God's children. That, that would be my gripe with Donald Trump. No, watch your language. See, some of them are bringing guns. Some of them are bringing crime. Right? Because I belong to God. You who are listening belong to God. And those immigrants who are crying out to God every night, many of them belong to God. Like I said, I have been to one of the churches in Mexico and we prayed with some um, some Mexicans in Mexico. So yeah, watch how you're talking about God's children. And just stick to the topic at hand. You know, when you're, uh, you know, politicizing your angle or whatever. Okay, you know, we wish immigration could be better. And these are our points, yada, yada, yada. Um... Uh, don't demonize entire groups of people. Watch what you say, especially when you're talking about God's children, whether they're coming from Honduras, whether they're black Christians, whether they're white Christians. However, however you, you know, however, just watch how you talking about God's children. Now, back to what I was saying. Uh, there's some black people that say, oh, Amber Rose want to pair up with those racist white people. Those manifest destiny. They heard that they could get free land for, uh, and the Native Americans would be kicked off their land, but the land would be guaranteed by the U.S. government. How dare they come and take the land and and your Amber Rose is going to partner with that and don't. They were guaranteed land for generations. We never got our 40 acres and a mule. And because we didn't have a head start, we were still struggling. Had you received, and Manifest Destiny is a, is a small part of that. There's, you know, there are different land grabs 
um, from Ireland, um, where the U.S. government invited the Irish. I think they, at one point, they invited the Swedish. Um, the Irish before Ellis Island, before Ellis Island in the 1900s, I think they invited the Irish during the potato famine and for them not only to escape the potato famine, but take some of that land away from the Native Americans and the federal government was going to uh, ensure that land for the new white settlers. That, hey, this is your land. Nobody can take it from you. The Irish, the Swedish, I think, also was able to take some land for the Native Americans. There were different land settle, settlement movements during the 1700s and 1800s. Uh, yeah, so yes, white people got a leg up. If, if the story was in reverse and black people from Africa were invited after escaping regional wars, invited by America to come in and say, hey, they're going to move the Native Americans off the land. We're going to give you free land. That is your land. We're going to make sure that nobody can ever take this land from you. The deed is yours. And we, the American government, are your insurance for that deed. Black people would be like, okay. They're not, they wouldn't question, you know, those black Africans would be like, okay. They wouldn't quit because they're trying to escape the potato famine and, and skirmishes uh, in their home countries. They're not going to debate, well, why are you removing the Native Americans off the land? You know, part of them will feel sad, but at the same time, for the Native Americans, but at the same time, it's like, uh, what other option do I have? I'm escaping skirmishes in my home country. Uh, yeah, like, if you were given the opportunities that some whites were given hundreds of years ago, you would have taken the opportunity as, as well. And that's not something to apologize for, that individual whites should apologize for. I believe the American federal government has apologized for a lot of their role in the, you know, illegal land grabs and slavery and things of that nature. Um, I don't want to get into reparations right now. That's another topic, a very long topic for another day. But, um, uh, Again, it goes back to that verse. Whoever doesn't take care of their children are worse than an infidel. You never fault people for doing the best they can to provide for their family, to attempt to ensure that when they die, that their children and grandchildren have some type of dwelling to rest their head. That they have, you know, some inheritance from their grandparents. So at least th this family won't go broke for a, at minimum a year while the family readjusts. You know, like, what I feel like what we as black people should be saying is, okay, now that we have college degrees, particularly... The black women. How can we get our generational wealth? How can we, going back again to my upbringing with the Magus and the First Baptist Churches of it all, everything in its rightful place at its rightful time, a time to sow and a time to reap and a time to harvest those Ecclesiastes verses. You have your education. You might be the first or second generation that's a, a, of, of black people in your family. You're not the tenth like some white people, but you're the first or the second. You're finally establishing some generational wealth. How do you not sleep with the wrong guy? Use your spiritual intuition 
to make sure that that wealth is not taken from you within one generation. How do we keep the wealth going? How do we take advice, advice from other races of people who have done this already? You have some of those magas that are willing to have that conversation with you. They want to see you succeed because they want to see America succeed. I remember being at the First Baptist Churches, you know, and, you know, my mom's friends, you know, the magas <laughs> are so excited about, you know, the different colleges I have attended and, you know, what is her career? What is she doing now? People, most people in this country are good in nature. They want to see you win and succeed. Now, yes, there's racism in both political parties. You know this. See how Kamala Harris is being treated. She's being overlooked as, you know, if Joe Biden dies, then who's the next in line? Obviously, Kamala Harris, the vice president. So you know that there's racism on both sides of the political spectrum. But at the end of the day, what, you know, what party do you believe best suits your needs? Um... For me, I'm going to go with the Democrats this time because, um, yeah, I fear God in the area of treating immigrants better, um, watching our rhetoric toward the immigrants and, you know, and the migrants, um, not using DEI as a slur word. And I understand, from my understanding, the person that spoke before, uh, you know, Amber was Charlie Kirk. And he used the euphemism about, okay, DEI with airline pilots. And you're just lowering the test scores for, you know, allegedly for these people to get their pilot license and our plane's going to crash. And not for every company that's trying DEI initiatives, but for some companies, that is the truth. And that's kind of what scares me about DEI because um, the famous case that started it all, the DEI conversation at the University of Michigan Law School, from my understanding, um, I wrote a paper about this in college. It's been decades ago now. But from what I remember, the University of Michigan was kind of lowering their entrance scores for black um, applicants. And, um, you know, that's not good. We want competent lawyers, right? But I'm assuming, okay, you let the black people in and then if they, you know, they're going to be graded the same once they get into the school. But the general public doesn't want to hear all of that. You know, it's like, okay, if you're, you know, a lot of them are probably thinking, oh, if you're going to lower the standards here, then you'll probably lower the, you know, grade requirements once you get into law school and they won't but that's not how the general public thinks but they won't because you know University of Michigan Law School understands that the law review boards will rank their you know will classify their rank as you know the best law schools, you know, the best law school in America or not, based on how many people pass the LSAT and what are their scores on the LSAT, which is a direct reflection on what, you know, students are learning at the University of Michigan School of Law. So no, uh, students might be let in with lower scores, but they will eventually have to 
you know, catch up to the standards of the University of Michigan School of Law. But I don't blame the public for not wanting to hear that entire conversation, that rigmarole. No, you need to adapt to my culture. If this is a majority white society and the tests are written in a Eurocentric you know, um, cultural landscape. Yeah, that's because this is still a majority white country. And instead of me adapting to you, you need to adapt to me as, you know, a Eurocentric white person. And yes, we can allow 10 or so questions on this test to be more um, ethnic centered because it's how our late nation looks. It's mostly white and then... You know, we have a plethora of other people. But until we're a majority minority, you still need to learn as an applicant how to study a Eurocentric test. And your failure to adjust yourself to societal norms is not necessarily the problem of white folk. That's not necessarily the problem with white folk because eventually when minorities become the majority, the test will change. And, you know, the test will start having more ethnic stories, stories of color. And what those white people are going to do is they're going to get the best te test prep systems in all of the universe. And they're going to study our culture just so they can pass these exams. Like they study our braids and the Kardashians and all that. They study our braids and our butt and our red lipstick. Believe me, they're going to study, you know, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. How can we compare that to the slave codes of 1865 in Illinois? What were the similarities and what were the differences? And typically a white person wouldn't care or wouldn't know about that. But believe me, when this country becomes majority minority, it's like, well, okay, this is what our country looks like. I have to learn this for the test. This is the new standard now. I'm getting the best te test prep com company in the entire land. And I'm going to learn this and I'm going to get into that law school. My mom just said something that's um, pretty, you know, uh, you, it, I, I, it's very profound. Um, we were just talking about when I lived in LA, um, and there was this Walmart in South LA that just like all of the apples were just like so old. And we were just talking about how like Walmarts are disappearing around the country, and um, and how we used to live far away from a Walmart, but now we're very close to a Walmart, and uh, it just basically is like. Yeah, black people get the oldest apples because they keep stealing stuff and nobody wants to give them anything new. And so you'll get an older Walmart with older apples in it. And I was just telling her about my experience one time at a, at a um, South LA Walmart, particularly in the black community. And it was just like, I didn't like that Walmart at all. I said, I'm never going back. It was just... The food was old and, you know, mom was explaining to me like, yeah, these black people, they want to be counterculture over countercultural over there in South L.A. The Watts riots and all of this stuff. Nobody wants to deal with that. If they don't want to get with the program. Yeah, they're going to get the oldest stuff. They, You know, nobody's going to give them the best stuff because they're not reliable. And it's like, OK, you're not going to look at MAGA people and say, oh, they hate society, you know, and then you're expecting them to, like, help you out with stuff and, you know, help you out with uh, getting new stores and new businesses and be a partner with white people economically, like, e equal benefit between the communities and you're just, like, so countercultural and... You don't want all of the tests to be Eurocentric when most of the country is white and like you're just so 
you don't want to get along with people and and that, that keep in mind that doesn't mean remember the 10 ethnic questions on the test i used that as an example earlier that does not mean that people do not try to learn your culture yes they are currently learning your culture as well but some of us black people are so like my mom was saying so countercultural. it's just like when people try to help you, when they try to give you the 10 questions on the test, you know, that are, are about Euro, uh, that are not Eurocentric. When they try to you put just a Walmart in your community and see how that works and to see if, you know, they're going to get a return on their profit, like a mutual benefit for a white community and the black community. You steal from white people, you know, they're not getting anything in return. So it's just like, are you going to be a friendly face like Amber Rose? Are you going to be nice? Um, is this a mutual benefit where she can draw in the black female vote? And then they can see as white people that not all black women are, you know, just, you know, twerking and dancing on cars and getting an education but still blowing their money on the wrong guy. You know, there are some intelligent and beautiful entrepreneurial black women. And say what you want about Amber Rose and her videos and all of that. Um, her baby daddy is a very wealthy rapper. Her first baby daddy. Her second baby daddy, not as wealthy, but he is in the industry. Like, she didn't, she didn't get any broke, like, super broke, broke, you know. Say what you want about her, but she dated smart. And, you know, my definition of smart might be different than your definition of smart. Because some of you are like, oh, well, uh. He's not a millionaire. It's like her. And you're some of the same people that are like, you can't, you're dating, you know, some weird old guy who's not even in your industry. He's not, y'all don't even have the same hobbies. You're just using him to screw, you know. You're talking about Amber Rose, but you're doing worse. You're doing worse. Oh, she's not married. She has somebody in the industry. Somebody that's, you know, she has people that are have her similar interests. You're dating a guy that's an entirely different industry. And he doesn't even like working. Sometimes he quits his job. He's immature. He, you know, he's not making any money ever. He's only flipped burgers, but he has a good dick. That's not and that that's not the kind of that's not the caliber of people that Amber Rose is dating. So I do you know, let's let's give credit where credit is due. Um and the more that we uplift our black women, you'll see that you have women that choose better like Amber Rose. You have women that choose even better than Amber Rose. And then you have women that'll get married to the right guy and not the wrong guy. We'll just continue to get better as black women. So, you know, even though I'm still voting for Biden, um, you know, I thought overall it was a good speech. And regardless of who you're voting for, I think we can come together um, as Americans.